The goal of the builder pattern is to separate the construction of an object from its representation. So let's dissect that a bit. So the construction of an object and its representation. We need to know what both of these things mean in order to understand this definition. So let's start with an object's representation. So if we imagine we have a class called house and that class has three fields, stories, door type, and roof type. And let's imagine that stories can either be one or two, and door type can either be a single door or a double door, and roof type can either be a pointy roof or a flat roof. Now, when we create an instance of house, there are different combinations of these fields that are possible. So if we imagine that we have an instance of the house here, we'll just say house object. And this instance has stories one, door type is a single door and roof type is pointy. This is just one possible variation of a house. And we can again imagine that we create another instance and this will also be a house object. But this one will be stories two, door type will be double and roof type flat. So both of these are house objects, but there are two different representations of the house class. So this one is a one-story house with a single door and a pointy roof, and this one is a two-story house with a double door and a flat roof. Now both of these are houses, but their representations are different because their fields have different values, resulting in two different types of house. So each of these is a representation of a house. So that's what we mean when we say an object's representation. Now how about the construction of an object? So if you have a house class, a house class will have a constructor method. So in most languages, constructing a new house would look something like this. So here, the client code is directly calling this house class's constructor method. And this will be what is responsible for the construction of one of these objects, right? Now, currently, the construction of the object is tightly coupled with its representation because we're using the house class's constructor method directly to construct the house. But in the builder pattern, we want to separate the construction of an object from its representation. So the construction of the object, we want to leave that responsibility to the builder. And a simple example of how we would do this is we would have a class and maybe we'd call it house builder and it would have the attribute stories, door type, and roof type. And within this class, we'd have methods to set these fields. So we'd have set stories, set door type, and set roof type. And we would also have a method called build that constructs the house. So it would return a new house with the constructor method. But there's a difference here. And the difference is on this house class, we would change its constructor method to take in a house builder as its argument. So let me explain what I mean by that. So let's remove this because we won't be calling the house constructor method directly. The builder, the house built, the house builder is going to call it for us. And let's just imagine we're defining this class's constructor method here. And it's going to look like this. It's going to be house. And the argument that it's going to take is house builder. So now house is going to take an instance of this class. And then this house builder, when you call the build method on it, it's going to call house with itself as the argument. And this is where we're separating the construction of the object from its representation. So here there's a clear separation between the construction of the object because we're creating an instance of the house builder. And then we're passing that to the house. And then house's constructor method takes in a house builder as an argument. So the house builder, the object that we're passing into the house constructor is a separate entity from the representations that end up being created based on the configuration provided by the house builder. So if this is the representation, this is the construction of the object. And that's what's meant by separate the construction of the object from its representation. Because before we were directly constructing the house object by calling the house's constructor method, but now we're constructing a separate object entirely. And then that object gets passed to the house constructor 
And from that separate object, the house constructor is going to create whatever representation by this house builder object. So that's what we mean when we say the goal of the builder pattern is to separate the construction of an object from its representation. The construction of an object from its representation. So let's go ahead and go over a minimal code example to solidify your understanding of this. So let's start by creating the house class. And as mentioned previously, the constructor method for the house class is going to take in a builder object. And from that object, we can populate our class fields. And that's going to be our house class. So now we can also create our house builder class. And all of the fields for this class will just default to none. And just like in the explanation before, we need to define our setter methods. And in the setter method, when we're returning self, we're returning an instance of house builder with whatever values are populated here. So let's go ahead and define the rest of the setter methods. And lastly, we want to define our build method. And here we're going to return a new instance of a house passing in self as the parameter, self being the instance of our house builder. So now if we go down to the bottom here, we can just say usage and we'll create a house builder and it'll be a new instance of house builder. And we can create one story house, which will be equal to our house builder dot set stories and we can set that to one. Now currently if we only set the stories and leave it as is, this one story house is an instance of house builder. It's not yet an instance of house because we haven't called our build method yet. But as you can see we can set other fields for our house separately. So we can go ahead and take one story house and we can set door type equal to single and we can also go ahead and add roof type and we'll set that one equal to pointy. But still, we're left with a house builder object. So if we want to actually get the house, we can set one story house equal to one story house dot build. And this is actually going to call the build method that is part of our house builder class. So this one story house is no longer a house builder, it's the actual house that we return here after we create the instance. So actually it would make more sense to name this one story house build step one and change this to one story house build step one and change this to one story house build step two. And this would change to one story house build step two. So now this makes a little bit more sense logically. So this is going to be an instance of house and this up here will be an instance of the builder. Now let's imagine that we wanted to be more organized about the way that we're building these houses. So currently we're doing all of the build steps in this usage area here. So if we wanted to build multiple houses, we'd have to keep doing all of these build steps, which, which would eventually get pretty messy. But what if we had a set specification for the types of houses that we wanted to build? For example, what if we knew that a one-story house would always have a pointy roof and a single door? And we also knew that a two-story house would always have a double door and a flat roof. Well, in that case, we could just encapsulate all of this logic into another class called the director. So let's just remove all of this and we'll go ahead and create another class called director. Now you can just think of the director as the class that manages the builders. So if we imagine them as people, we could imagine that we have a group of contractors who are the builders, and we can imagine that we have a director that oversees all of the building. So the director essentially manages all of the builders or contractors. So the director class would also take in a builder as its parameter. And within this class, we can define the methods to build the two different types of houses. So we can have a method to build a one-story house, and we could also have a method to build a two-story house. And now, instead of having all of these build steps in our usage logic, we'd just be able to remove this, and we can just create a director object which needs a house builder. And now we can build multiple houses of whatever type that we desire in a neat and encapsulated way. So we would just say director.build 
one story house whenever we want a one story house. And same thing if we want a two story house, we just do director.build two story house. And as you can see, you could have multiple of these and it's not gonna be as messy as it was before having all of the build steps every time we built a house in our usage code. So this is for if we have set specifications on what defines a two-story house and what defines a one-story house. And if we had a different specification that we wanted to add, we could always add it to the director here. So maybe we'd have something like build apartment. And we could set these fields to whatever we imagine comprises an apartment. Anyways, that is the builder pattern. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe if you already haven't. And I'll see you in the next one.